Welcome and or welcome back to the Broken Bad Bitches podcast. Yes, episode six. six. How we exciting. Are. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We're like over halfway done with our season. Yeah. Are y'all sad? You better be sad. So <laughs> it's been a long time for us recording and uh, we almost forgot how to do this. I'm Hannah here joined by... Miss Prissy. My little baby Prissy Poo. Hello, hello. Okay, so we have a really exciting episode here today. But before we get into it, let's just do a little check-in, check-up. Priscilla, how are you? How are things? I'm good. So this is not going to be like last episode where we're like kind of trying to recapture a month worth that we recorded like a week ago, right? Yeah, something Um, like that. So really since then, my son has been now on summer break. So now I'm just like, like, you know, usually I don't have to worry about eight hours of his day because I'm like, he's at school. So now I'm cooking like way more meals and spending way more time with him and he's coming to work with me. And um, and then I've been working seven days a week for like weeks. So I'm just out here getting bags, honey. So you're out here having a, yeah, eye bags. You need to take a nap. <laughs> I'm so tired. Oh, my poor baby. That that was rude. I did not mean to say that. All was that was actually very rude. I use very expensive eye cream. Okay. Am well, not, anyways, am I am I not getting my money's worth? Is that like what <laughs> I'm you're... just saying? It's not going to make up for the three hours of sleep you get. Yeah, and only just a little a future tap in next week's episode will be in relation to that. So stay tuned. Wink, wink. And now we're especially aware of how terrible not getting enough sleep is for you. But that's neither here you nor there. <laughs> so last time we recorded. I had just literally just hopped off the plane. I had just hopped off a plane from Nashville, came here immediately from the airport, luggage in hand to record. And since then, you know, a whole week of time has passed. I the very next day got on a plane. Literally. And literally the next day. Because I'm a goofy and went to Florida, spent the weekend in Florida, worked there. It was It was good. Then it was my birthday on Wednesday. I had got back from Florida on Monday. Wednesday, we had my birthday dinner. Oh my gosh. Should we tell them how like terrible the service? And I never complain about service. Like I really don't. We need to. So we went to this really, really nice restaurant in Dallas called... uh, The Monarch. Yeah. On like the 20 or 49th floor of like the Thompson Hotel. Beautiful view. Beautiful restaurant. Um, But the waiter was just like so weird. And go tell him about the stuff. Yeah. So we were all sitting there and it was weird. And he's like giving us the full rundown. And like, we haven't even looked at the drink menu. We haven't even looked at the food menu. And we're just like, sir, can we just fucking sit and right? Like, like, and it wasn't just one suggestion. Like he literally went through item by item and explained the entirety of the menu. Which in nice restaurants, I get that they do that, but also like read the room. But then he was right there and he's like, okay, so what do you want to drink? And we're like, I don't know. You just gave us a history lesson for like the past 20 minutes. I have no idea. So we we all ordered drinks and we're, again, just trying to chill. Um, s- some of the girls went to the bathroom and they're like, okay, so appetizers and this. And then like Hannah came back from the bathroom and he's like, I just want to let you know that you have to put your order in now because then your food's going to take this long and da 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 And we're just like, and bro. Yeah, it was very weird because we had just ordered appetizers and he was, we had ordered that. And I was like, that's all we know for right now. And he's like, okay, so how this works oh, is yeah. you're going to, when I come back, you're going to have your entree ready because it's going to take at least 20 minutes after we put it in for your food to come out. So you like need to order it. And then by yeah, the so time... we rush and like put yeah, in our order. Rushed. Uh, honestly, both of us didn't even like our actual entree because I no. just got whatever. I'm glad we got like four things of appetizers because those were good. I know. But um, what else did he do? So this is what got me... This is what grinded my gears. Yeah. So he like dropped off Hannah. Hannah ordered the mashed potatoes because all my baby wanted for her birthday was some damn mashed potatoes. Yes. I have simple needs. So she got the mashed potatoes as a side. And as he dropped them down, he said to her, "Um, yeah, you need the carbs to dance later. Which didn't sit well with me. I don't even know what that like means. Yeah. Didn't like that. 
Mm-mm. So then later on, I, I, Hannah and two of the other girls, y'all ventured and took pictures or went back to the bathroom. Yeah, we I don't went know to where the y'all bathroom went. Or- I was too cold to move. So I was like, no, y'all have fun. So it was me and two of your other friends at the table. Mm-hmm. And so they bring us all the appetizers and the same waiter who's doing the goddamn most was like telling the the food runner, he was like, don't tell him you're a stripper. Like really loud and obnoxious. It was just a lot. It was just not needed. Like it was the weird. commentary was weird. I felt like, I don't know. It was weird. So we're eating our appetizers. We're all not even done. We had literally, honestly, just all gotten back to the tables. The appetizers just got there. We got there. Just barely started eating these appetizers. And then all, like eight different food runners come out with all of our things. Entrees. And we're looking at them like, um, right. no. And it's one thing if it like kind of comes out fast, that's fine. But the problem was that they started literally grabbing like full uh, appetizer plates like out of our way. Mm-hmm. Like my friend uh, literally had just barely like gotten her toast all perfectly how she wanted it with her cheese and all that. And then, like, he comes and, like, swoops the plate. And it was just, it was, like, whoa, yeah, bro. We were, and we're all, like, we're not done. Yeah, and Lo had to be, like, we literally just got this. And I don't, like, typically ever have a lot of complaints about restaurants, to be honest. But it was weird. And it's, like, one of, it's, like, the one of the top popping restaurants right now in Dallas. So I'm thinking, mm-hmm. I, I, I just wasn't expecting that. I'm a big foodie. I love to eat. I love fine dining. And that was just not... It I think they were just intimidated by us because we're all, like, just objectively, like, that not bitches. to brag. You did. Shit on them. Shit on them. Shit on them. Sh- we but, were shitting on them. So we pulled up Respect looking... You bad and then they just had to have something to say but it was just weird didn't and like I didn't it. like that they were trying to take the food don't first of all say anything but do not touch my plate no and we even told the manager we were like I don't know why we were rushed to order our, our entrees yeah. if this was going to be the, the deal the manager was looking at us and we're like bro we just got this and he's like oh well they put it in as a rush order like VIP so I'm not understanding and I'm like what happened was your waiter literally Peer pressured us I into ordering. I did not have a good time for, with the food. Mm, yeah. But, I mean, it was the, nice. But to the with dinner, the okay, yeah. aside from that, I had a really cute dinner. It was pretty much just me and the only people I like talk to. <laughs> so it was just like literally me and like five other people. And then it, it was, was just really group. cute. We yeah, a, yeah, we got we got a little free shots as they should because of the weird service. And um I opened my gifts and I I cried. It was it was very adorable. Per usual. Mm. I know Who's knew. surprised? Who is surprised? And then um we all like went around the table and they all told like a story that made them think of me and it was like really cute. It was super cute. I really liked that. And then especially because um it's funny, like none of my friends know each other. Like my I don't have one friend group. I'm involved with like multiple different friend groups. Yeah, so. pretty diverse. You're a diverse little nugget. Oh, which, you know, kind of segues here into oh what we're doing today. So let's go ahead and discuss what we're getting into today. Priscilla, what is this episode about? We wanted to wait a little bit and we wanted to introduce before we got a little weird. Yeah. But we you had know to what? dip the toe in the pool dip before we jumped the in. the toes in the pool and the pool but, said it's ready warm. But we're going to admit it to you. We're getting weird, you guys. We are. I collect rocks and I do moon rituals. So that's who we are and that's what <laughs> we're doing. So today's episode we're is going to be about astrology. Yes. So yeah, we're going to get into astrology today. So Mm -hmm. we figured we might lose some people, but we also want those who may not believe in astrology, just hear us out. Totally. And here we got to say, you don't have to agree, but it is, you know, interesting to think of other people's point of views. And you can't make this shit up. This is, I think the the thing that I learned about astrology and this has been my saying since I started my spiritual journey, you cannot make this shit up. Mm-hmm. You can't. You simply cannot. No, it's really true. How um, did you get into astrology? Man, I don't even know. I think it was just like popular in my friend group because at that point, like I've been um, like meditating and making like chi balls in my hand and trying to like see my own aura and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I started doing that when I was 14, okay. maybe 15. 
Um, but as far as like actually astrology, I don't know. I think it was just kind of like a progression over time as yeah. far as that. But it really is so important to me because I really feel so seen. And a lot of the times I, you know, whether this is real or perceived, I feel very misunderstood. Mm -hmm. And so I think that this astrology is a really good way to like get to know yourself better and just feel like, you know, finally all the pieces of my puzzle like make sense. Yeah. You don't have to like ask yourself like, why am I like this? Like, no, I know exactly why I'm like this right. because my son's in my fifth house and it's, you know, conjunct like this, that, you know, like you can kind of like really right. put the pieces together. And it's crazy because I feel like people who uh, tend not to believe they, all they know is they're like sun sign yeah. and then they say, oh, well, that's not me and I don't relate. So all well, that's fake, which is fine. You know, you see what you believe and it, yeah. that's your reality. But I think the more you get into it and realize that there's actually a lot going on, mm -hmm. it really, yeah, it really does something for me. I got into astrology when I was super young. Um, my mom was really big into astrology, but oh, I, really? I, I told you, I also grew up really like Jehovah's Witness and like, so we believed in it. And then my mom would always be like, I know we're not supposed to, it's the devil and da, 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 da. But she really believed in it. We had like That's books weird. in the house because my mom's a Leo, my dad's a Virgo, I'm a Taurus. We always had like books on it. And my mom is very spiritual, but I think she suppresses it a lot. Mm -hmm. Cause she's the one that got me into dreams and she got me into angel numbers. Every time I was little, we would kiss the clock at 444 on 1111. Like, Aww. and especially with astrology and people, her sisters call her like Bruja like mm -hmm. to be funny. Um, and I really think my mom is very, a very intuitive, powerful spiritual yeah. being. And I think unfortunately because of the path that she chose she like really blocks that out but she started my love for astrology so I've always oh. been in tune and I, ever since I was little I've known traits of a Capricorn man and a Leo woman and this and that like mm -hmm. I've learned that all from my mom and then you know just growing up I kind of like taught myself a little bit more about it and it's just been like a self-discovery tool and yeah you kind of I, I learned way more than you know just the sun sign that I learned growing up so I've always been into astrology, like my whole life. Well, that's cool. I definitely didn't get any uh, parental influence as far as astrology or really anything like spiritual. Mm. We grew up like soft Christian and then soft. like soft Christian. Soft Christian, Like yeah. church was optional. Yeah. And I opted out most of the time. Yeah. Um, not that there's anything wrong with people doing what they want to do. Do that. Do all that. Love that for you. Love that for you. But so, yeah, that's how we started our little spiritual hoopla. But so when we say astrology, that could mean so many things. And yeah. we do not have the time and I do not have the attention span. So today we're it just going to focus. Hole. Oh, my God. Yeah. You could sit and just literally become completely like immersed. a crazy person for yeah. days reading books and research. And yeah, it's crazy. And it's crazy because then there would still be more things that, that you, you would discover that you don't know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. It's crazy. So today, I think me and Hannah were like, where do we start? Because we, yeah. we do want to do kind of like an astrology series. Like we don't want this to be like a whole thing. But, you know, here and there, we're going to pop in and talk 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 moon and stars with you guys and right and we want to see how it goes like we're not going to get crazy just yet like we just want to give you a Unless basic overview let me know if you're into it yeah like let that. us know do you like that okay calm <laughs> calm down you are way too trying celibish. to get our numbers up yeah way too celibate that is not this <laughs> but we decided i think a good place and a good starter point um, would be to discuss the big three. Because like Hannah said, people don't believe in astrology because they're like, well, I'm a Capricorn and I'm not like every other Capricorn. For one, that's exactly what a Capricorn would say. Oh and my God. for two, <laughs> it's because there's like a whole other formula behind what you are. Mm -hmm. So like- It's not just one sign. It's no. an entire formula. It's a- snapshot of the sky and of the astrological bodies like mm -hmm. as you were being brought into this world yeah and I, I explained birth chart so like what a natal chart is so just how like when you look at like in science class when you'd have to do like the planets orbiting around the sun mm -hmm. in that sense your natal chart would be the plant 
planets and where they were and you would essentially be that sun. Like where yeah. where was all the planets at? So it just talks about your whole life path, life journey, personality. It goes from childhood all the way into beyond in the spiritual realm. So it is a whole snapshot of what makes you you. And it is like a formula. Like nobody right. is going to have the exact same natal chart as you. Exactly. And that's why, you know, you can look at someone who you're a Capricorn and they're a Capricorn and you can say th- these are not equal, but they n- never were mm-hmm. because there's so much going, going on. Going on behind the scenes. And yeah. so when Priscilla says big three, what we're talking about is, you know, your main sign, we refer to that as your sun sign. And that's what most people know. So when yeah. people say, oh, I'm a Virgo, I'm this, it's just their sun sign. Mm-hmm. But the big three is going to mean your sun, your moon, and your rising or ascendant. And so we're going to get in to all three of those. Yeah. So your sun, which is the most one that typical people seem to know, yeah, your the horoscope, main thing the one that, that you're gonna you know. read on Cosmo Magazine, the one that you grew up understanding that you, you were, that is your sun sign. And that is most associated with your ego. That is just who you are on a day-to-day basis. Your sun sign is also who you are set to be in your career role. Because again, that is how you carry yourself on a day-to-day basis. So that energy that you carry would be um, like, for example, a Libra would do great doing something with law or diplomacy. Ooh, yes. Um, a, a Virgo would do something great with logistics. Right. A, a Scorpio would be really great as a psychologist yes. or psychotherapist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it just kind of shows like the career role that you would be good at because, again, it is your ego. Your sun sign is your day to day. Yeah. A Sagittarius should just be. Just be. Winning. That's all. Boop. And so that's what is the most commonly associated, oh, I am this, right? And so that's exactly how you move through the world on a day-to-day basis, right? And then going forward, you have your moon sign. And that's going to be more like your inner self and how you like react to things more so. That is, so think about like the sun is out in the daytime. So who you are on a day to day and your moon is who you are when you're by yourself. Yeah. The, the, the part of yourself that really nobody sees, your mm-hmm. intuitions, yeah. your emotions, how you cope with things. That's also how you, the moon is the mother. So how you mother yourself, how do mm-hmm. you cope with things in your inner self? Yeah. Your moon sign is who you are when you're alone in your house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how I like to see it. And then exactly your sun sign is who you are out and about. Exactly. Um, And then lastly, you're rising. And this is kind of what people find interesting. And you do need your, um, the time of your birth in order to find out your rising. Mm -hmm. Because you can find out your suns and moon just with your birthplace and your birthday. But in order to figure out rising, because it can change every two hours, because this is where, what sign was rising over the Eastern horizon? As you were like, Literally you, going down the birth canal, soul, entering the world. Yes, as your soul entered this physical earth, mm-hmm. what what sign was it? And, and departs from your mother in that sense. Exactly. That's mm-hmm. when you are there. Exactly. And th- this sign is so important because... I was I, going to say... I call this, when I explain it to people, I say this is like your Instagram profile sign. Mm-hmm. This is a sign where if someone just saw you and didn't really have a conversation, how you are being portrayed. Right. The rising sign, arguably, I think is more important than your sun sign because Mm -hmm. it's how you are subconsciously asking the world to perceive and react to you. How you want the world to address you. Yes. How Mm -hmm. do I need to be addressed in the world? And that's dependent on your rising. And I think um, I could be wrong. I think I saw this on a TikTok. But um, it must be true. (laughs) I don't make the rules. But I'm pretty sure that they used to, when people used to ask, like, what's your sign? They used to be referring to your yes, rising. back and in the day. I don't know when it shifted or, or, or why, but your Cosmo rising sign to me is it. the most interesting and, like, arguably so, so. It is. One of the most important, they, for sure. I will say, like, a little tip if you're reading your daily horoscope, um, read your rising sign. I think it's going to be m- more accurate. Mm-hmm. I found in my research for this, because we prepared a sheet or whatever, 
um, that it sets the standard for your style as far as how, you know, again, how you dress, how you present Mm -hmm. yourself and physically how you look, where this position was, it sets up the rest of your chart. It sets up the the planets and it sets up the houses. And that's another episode for another season (laughs) because the houses is a whole other... (laughs) Don't get me started on the Lilith node. (laughs) No, Chiron. No, just kidding. I can't. <laughs> and so that's your rising sign. And if you say you're ascendant, then you're talking about the particular degree of your rising. And that's hmm, I actually that, did not know that. Boop. Wow. We're all learning things together. As we should. You stop learning, you start dying. This is very dark. All that being said is we wanted to provide some context because right now what we're going to do is we're going to now kind of you get really two benefits. We're going to explain it a little bit more as we talk about what our big three is. So you get yes. to know more about us and then it gets mm-hmm. to all make sense to you. So this you double learning. are double winning. And maybe if one of your positions is the same, you yeah. might learn, learn something, something about, about yourself. yourself. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, beep, beep. Okay. <laughs> so I th- <laughs> our damn sound effects, I swear. So... That's what we mean when I say when we say the big three: sun, moon, rising. Now that we have that all figured out, and there's way more, but this is the oh, most yeah. important. If you're going to start with astrology, start with your big three. I we, think that's going to be most. This important. is us dipping our toes. Well, Ooh. your toes really in the water. Me and Hannah have. We all have ten toes. We're back to a. Ten oh my piece. god! Yeah, I have all my toenails. Let's see, not We're to brag. Dipping all the toes. Anyways. So, Priscilla, do you want to go ahead and start and tell us about your son, you little Taurus queen? Yes. We should all know that she just had her birthday in Taurus season. Yes, I did. When we, well, right when we started recording for the podcast. Oh my gosh. gearing up for my birthday. So I am a Taurus. Taurus is fixed earth energy. It is the first of the earth sign. Taurus, which means that it's like the, like the goddess. Think of Taurus as the goddess of the zodiac. I just want to say really fast, you're going to hear things like fixed, cardinal, mutable. Basically, just think about it like in this carnation, the fixed sign is what's going to do like the chunk of the work. Mm -hmm. Any cardinal sign is like a natural leader and they're going to be what kickstarts Mm -hmm. the growth. Fixed is going to be what is steady, what is grounded, what's going to come in and do the job. And the mutable sign is there to wrap it up and allow room for new change. That was good. And so just so yeah. that you guys know, in case y'all don't know any any of it, which is totally I know. fine. I think because we're I'm so deep into this, so I need to like maybe like tie it down. I just a bit. I, I didn't know. want no, 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 uh, everyone good. to be confused. But so this yes. is years of research coming out of me and Hannah's mouth. So literally that I'm glad you stopped and said so, that. So yes, Taurus, fixed earth, and also if we didn't know. Um, all of the signs have an element attached. So that's either going to be water, air, fire, earth. It's like we're the last airbender and whatnot. I, I call me Aang, baby, because I'm all air. But it ain't about me right now. And I'll shit it. <laughs> so I'm a Taurus. I'm fixed to earth. And I'm also rule. Every sign has a planet There's ruler. There's so much to talk There's about. so much. Oh, my God. God gotta, like, this is supposed to, be a, supposed to be a brief overview, guys. Okay. Every, yes, go, go. Every um, sign has a, a ruling planet and uh, mine's is Venus. And Venus is, of course, the goddess of love, beauty and all Abundance, things. Abundance. Magical. Luxury. Yes. And she rules Taurus and Libra. Mm-hmm. So a little bit about Tauruses. So if you're a Taurus, this one's for y'all. I'm going to shout us out. So we are, <laughs> we are very dependable. And I found this yes. funny. Someone... I was watching a video. He was like, but you guys are more dependable out of habit more than helpfulness. And I was like, why are you It's not that you're like going out of your way to help other people. It's just that I know where you going to be at. (laughs) Let me just do this. I know know what the schedule looks like. I know I'm going to do it right. And I know I'm going to handle it the way it needs to be done. So let me just, I'm just going to do it. But we're very dependable. Taurus is because we are earth, which is materialistic. It's here in a very 3D and of course, ruled by Venus, the goddess of love, sex, beauty, passion. We are very, very sensual. Tauruses live through, we live through our senses. We want to feel, mm-hmm. taste, touch, smell, see, 
the most beautiful, amazing aesthetic things. Yes. And you, and I'm not judging because I moon and Libra. So I completely understand. We want the finer things. If you Period. are having this Venus energy, you like crave like luxurious experience. Mm-hmm. And that's not necessarily always materialistic, but it can be. And that certainly it as, is what it is. As a sign ruled by Venus, you should be really careful about your spending habits because you go oh, just can get bad. Mm-hmm. Trip and fall and wake up poor. I don't know. I spent money on accident. The whole <laughs> way. But when it comes to sex, food, clothes, home, art, everything, we want everything to be aesthetic. We want everything to be beautiful. Taurus, we do want everything to be comfortable. <laughs> yes. And the aesthetic is really important too. Like y'all, I literally don't post things unless I get Priscilla's approval. I'm like, she's the, we call her the head of our aesthetics department. And for <laughs> everything you see is yeah. a-okayed by Priscilla because I don't know. I just She like some... posted one thing. She's like, um, I hope it was okay. <laughs> I'm like, you did I, great. I think I went above and beyond. I was like nervous when I did it. Not going to lie. It's like, you're doing great, sweetie. <laughs> But Tauruses, we do work very hard. Now, we don't work fast, but we work very hard. No, it's a slow and steady. And whatever Taurus has their mind set to, it will, without a doubt, get done. Absolutely. And that's where the dependable comes back Mm -hmm. around full circle, too, is because if they said it, then they're going to do it. We said what we said. And this can also be a Taurus downfall because it, you You know, know, you might be a little stubborn. With that fix, you feel that you are less willing to adapt to your environment and more so expecting that your environment suit your needs. I'm going to go. <laughs> she said, anyways, I don't like this and I'm out. <laughs> no, I I.e. feel that Tauruses are stubborn as I argue about us being stubborn. Yeah, no, you're right. I'm always right. Yeah. Very Taurus of me to say that. Hmm. Mm. I don't like how Tauruses get like a reputation for being lazy. No, and that's not true. And I always say you premeditate and do your work on the front end. So Mm -hmm. that way that later on you can be strategically lazy. Tauruses are very strong willed, which again, I don't believe is stubborn. I just believe we're very passionate beings. Mm -hmm, We are mm -hmm. the most loyal I will say Taurus is when we love, we love so hard. And when the people that we love, it's like we hold it the fuck down. Absolutely. Um, Yeah. Again, Taurus is, it's the goddess of the Zodiac. I uh, was doing, in doing my research, they said the Taurus was like the goddess of the earth signs. Virgo was the maiden and the um, Capricorn was like the queen. Which I like that little Ooh. analogy. It was, it was really, really good. Capricorn pretty. is a queen. Capricorn a is a queen. Just, nudie little. Just <clears> handling <throat> her motherfucking business. Not taking no shit. Not taking no shit. That's no, you. None. Um, so with all that being, do you have any more? To add about your Taurusness? Hmm, I think you got it. And you're right. You're not stubborn. You win. I'm always right. I literally am always right. It's, and you said that wow. before. So that's just another example. Wow. Of you continually always. Being right. Yeah. Like you can't make this up. So <laughs> I for reference, can't some celebrity. So now that you have all this in mind, some celebrities um, that are Tauruses, George Clooney, Audrey Hepburn, the queen who her uh, birthday is actually me and her share the exact same birthday. May 4th. Wow. wow. A queen she is. Meek Mill, <laughs> Adele. Love Adele. Kehlani. Mm-hmm. Love Okay, that's my wife. Oh, oops, sorry. You're my wife. Love you. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Ex-wife. God damn it. I <laughs> and we got this on the audio, so I can't take it back. <laughs> you got cut. Um, so yeah, so just kind of some some fun celebrities. No, that to, is fun. Oh, and Cher. <gasps> Cher's my Cher? Cher's my yeah, Cher's a favorite. Mm-hmm. Chris Brown. Love. Yeah. I love that. I love Cher. She's a queen. She's a I could see that for her. Queen. Um Yeah, because whatever that quote about her, like, not needing a man. She said, my mother told me to marry a rich man. And I said, mom, I am my rich husband or something like that. Yeah, she said, honey, I am a rich man. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Love that for her. And she still looks sensational. (sighs) We're getting off topic, but I could just die. I want to read her whole chart now. God damn it. Okay. Moving on. Keeping it going. So as for myself... Don't hate me. Ah, my son is in Gemini. 
Okay. And well, I married her anyways. Yeah. Because you strong-willed and stupid. <laughs> 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 so Gemini is a mutable air sign. So if you could think like literally the opposite of a Taurus. The literal opposite. Literal opposite. So as we said, mutable is going to be way less fixed, like literally all over the place. Do you have you have good things to say about mutable? Do you have anything you want to add? No, I think you're I think you're adding it. So think of like mutable, something that can it's easily bendable. So fix is Super going to slayed. be a solid. Like it's right. going to be you cannot budge mm-hmm. it, but mutable, you can move it to be what you need yeah. it to be. Where a more fixed sign would be less willing to like change how they feel things need to be. A mutable sign like may not even know how they want things to be. And they're just like, yeah, cool. Yeah. And they so, would only know if it wasn't how they wanted it to be. And yeah. So I am a mutable air sign ruled by Mercury, the trickster. The planet of communication. Yes. And air is also like the sign of communication, communication as well. Technology. So mm-hmm. that's why uh, Geminis often are said to have the quote gift of gab. And that's why it's always my job to do the insightful quoting at the end. I do the aesthetics. She wraps it up. Then I do the we quoting. We are a team. We are a team, My baby. wife, solid colors. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so yes, um, any planet or I'm sorry, any sign ruled by Mercury is going to be like very intellectual by nature. Pretty much there is no point in time where a Gemini is not thinking of like at least 27,000 different things all at one time. It's like having all your browsers open at the same time. It's like already just preset ADD. Love that for you. Oh, God. At least one of us does. (laughs) But because of that, and because we have so much going on, and because we are so willing to change, we have a very much so like ability to pick up on things quickly and adapt to our surroundings. And because of that, we are like said to be the chameleons, right? We can fit in with any friend group, like I was saying. And we said earlier, I have a very diverse group of friends. None of my friends even really know each other because I'm part of like a bunch of different stiff because I have the ability to be able to get on with any person really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unless they like just ask me my sign up front and then they leave and walk away from me, which has happened to me. I do, No, I will say, and I hate to say this. I have gotten to the point where if I meet a man and he said he's a Gemini, I said, well, I love that for you, but I got to go. I won't even give him a chance. And I've that's been burned fair. too many times. And that's very fair. And you know what? And they're like, are you really not going to talk to me? Because I'm a Gemini. I said, that's exactly why I'm not going to talk to you. Baby, a cat only has nine lives. You can't keep using them up on a Gemini man at that. Yes, I can. No, It's my story and I'm sticking to it. You need to quit it. But anyway, so Very Geminis true. are represented by the twins. It's the duality, right? Mm-hmm. So this can be a really good thing. And this can also be a really bad thing. Geminis are kind of considered to be like the dr- bleh, words. the. Geminis are considered to be like the jack of all trades. Like we have our hand in a lot of different pots, but we're not really overly invested in any one thing. Jack of all trades, master of none. (laughs) Master of literally not a goddamn thing. (laughs) And it's honestly sometimes can be to your detriment because you so desperately want to like have a path, but it's just not. And it can't be. And that's okay. And there is power in that. You just have to really be able to like control it. I think that's a good point too in saying that every sign that we talk about has developed and underdeveloped traits. So like Mm -hmm. of a Taurus, Gemini, Leo, whatever sign, it's like there are really good traits and really bad Absolutely. traits. So, yeah. And that's why, guys, there are no bad signs. Like there there are signs that get a really bad rep and Priscilla <clears throat> does not agree because she says they're bad signs, but you know, whatever. Um, because think about it. the It's all a wheel, right? So we all need each other. You know, we all pick up where each other falls mm-hmm. and we all have the ability within ourselves to muster strength from other areas of our lives to overcome our downfalls. And we all have every sign somewhere in our chart representing some aspect of us. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. It's very rare for you to not have any of like something. Yeah. But so in that duality, it can also be a little confusing to get close to a Gemini just because one day, like we can be chopping it up so close and you like go to sleep and you think the next day is going to be the same and better and better and better. Nope. Wrong. (laughs) I don't know you anymore. That was yesterday. You weren't talking to me. You were talking to that other girl. Exactly why I don't do that. And so, yeah, no, no, no. And I understand. And so I have like, I have a bad time. I feel bad. 
because I am just the uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Raise so, your hand if you've been personally victimized by a Gemini. Mm, we've all all raising our hands here. It's, it's mm, the wounds are cutting deep. I'm not ready for this. <laughs> But so we can have a tendency to be a little bit hot and cold with people. That's why it can be important to understand other people's signs because you can say like, I don't have any less love for you just because I can't be there for you right now. Yeah. And because I'm not the me that wants to be communicative right now. Gemini's to me, well, in return, in regards to dating them and the men that I've dated, they've all been very childlike, okay. which is not a bad thing because... I could be very like rigid sometimes in things that I do because I'm just so type A. And maybe that's why you attract that. Oh my God. Yeah. And so it's nice because I get to like be goofy and like Mm -hmm. this and that. But in that, they need a lot of stimulation. And I I will say Geminis are the most likely sign to cheat because they get bored very easily. (sighs) They need very much a lot of stimulation. So if you do not give that to them, they feel no regrets to bounce out. Mm -hmm. And this, this, because Geminis are very naturally curious people. And so if there's a chance the grass is greener on the other side, I really hate to say, but like, I gotta go check it out. (laughs) Like I gotta see, I can't not see, I will die. And also Geminis kind of have like a weird tendency to like gravitate towards danger or like dark or like gritty things, if you've noticed. Mm -hmm, I I know a lot of Geminis that are like degenerates, Mm -hmm. just totally by choice, myself included. I'm not going to, I'm not going to act holier than thou. No. Oh, well, we'll have a talk later. It'll be (laughs) fine. Um, But so, and I understand what you mean about most likely to cheat too, because we are, first of all, like we said, we have really good communication skills and it's easy for me to talk to people. And so Geminis have a tendency to be like really flirty and they probably don't even mean it. Like, I don't know you and I don't care, but like it is a problem and it it can be something that you have to work around. It takes a very strong person to be able to like really wrangle in a Gemini and still give them that level of like intense, um, like we just have like a need to just go and do and simulate it. And I yeah. need to touch it and I need to smell it. Like it's just, there's so much. Yeah. No, I completely get but, it. But yeah. So just to, now that you have an idea of that, some Gemini celebrities, of course, Tupac. Love it. Biggie Smalls too. Um, Johnny Depp, which I can totally Love see that. Love that for Johnny Depp. What a crazy, crazy guy. Love it. Kendrick Lamar, also a Gemini. You can tell he's very poetic. Mm-hmm. And Marilyn Monroe, very seductive. Kanye West. Oh, Kanye West is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Crazy ass man. He's he living his, his life. Ass either, see? He's not. Kim not couldn't do it need. It. Wait, are they together? I don't know. No, they're not. They're getting divorced. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, I was like, maybe I don't know. Okay. So I think that pretty much wraps up our sun signs. So now moving forward to moon, which is again, our inner self, our emotional mm-hmm. self, our home. Now, after I just did all of that Gemini slander, I am here to tell you Mm. that I am a Gemini moon. Interesante. How the plot thickens. Hmm. So I do, I will say. That's suspicious. (laughs) I will say I am absolutely in love with my Gemini moon because what this means is, again, this is how I mother myself. This is how I nurture myself. So. Gemini being the planet of communication, Geminis read, they write, which is funny because if you heard the other episodes, I said when I started my healing, that's how I started healing. I started to meditate. I started to read. I started Mm -hmm. to write. And so writing is a big one. Found myself coming into my ways. Mm -hmm. Gemini moons are great at expressing their emotions. We are, I can very much articulate to you how I feel. Now on the same token of that, I will not be able to feel how I feel, but I can articulate how I feel, if that makes any sense. Like for me to sit It's and almost like you're watching you feel that I way. dissociate. Not feeling you feel dissociate. that way. Like even big Same. times in my life, like my wedding and high school graduation and all of those things, like I was never excited. I'm like, oh, it hasn't hit me yet because I, I, don't, I don't allow myself to, 
to feel it. Mm-hmm. It's weird. I, I, I can express, oh, this is exciting. This is nice. This is the best time right. of my life. But I don't know. Really, I it's, yeah, it's I very, dissociate very too. I literally don't remember being a nine. Yeah, it's very dissociative. <laughs> that could be the trauma though. Oh, uh, Gemini moons uh, being part of communication. They're, you know, like Hannah said, they have the gift of jab, like something about gab. Oh, yeah. Jab is like a <laughs> bet to <laughs> it to your heart. Ja, ja. The gift of gab, like they're very good with like witty banter. And so with that, you know, how Hannah has that in her sun sign, I have that in my moon sign. So Gemini's you Gemini moons use words to express emotions and we use words in deep humor and sometimes even to detach from emotions. Yeah, you definitely are a big like joke it off like you'll make a joke out of something and i'm like oh she hurting i do i know she's hurting laugh at my pain looking ass (laughs) (laughs) that is me (laughs) i can't tell if i'm laughing or crying that's literally her (laughs) um we need to constantly be on the move um like hannah said gemini moons are very adaptable yes gemini moons also not like we need a lot of stimulation we need to be hella stimulated we are very Mm. sapiosexual beings I could be like physically attracted to somebody, but if they don't stimulate my mind, my I, everything else is canceled, like completely canceled. the whole way, the whole completely goddamn way canceled. I need so much stimulation. I love me some witty banter, very quick on my feet. Um, also, you know, on the downside of that, we can be a little moody, a little irritable just because we do have so much fe- like thoughts and overthinking. Yeah. And, and like we said, we're always, air signs in general are always analyzing everything. Mm-hmm. And so like anything they say, they're thinking 20,000 times more than that. Yeah. And it's a lot. It's it's overwhelming and it leads to your own anxiety. Yeah. And we're very curious mm-hmm. and that could be curious to a fault because I want to know everything Definitely. about everything and it can get very overwhelming. I can have like anxiety and about hurt your own feelings. And again, this is where like the jack of all trades comes in because I People tell me, and Hannah tells me, I'm out of my house a lot. And when you hear about my moon and my rising, I definitely feel like it trumps my earth. <laughs> um, but I am, I literally, my my friends back in the day used to call me the queen of projects because I'm all, I've am always had like a full-time job and like two side jobs and like You're three side hustles doing the and literal projects. Most. Literally. So, um, so yeah, so Hannah covered most of the Gemini. So it is kind of the same for emotions, but again, that's how I mother and nurture and express myself is I need to communicate things. Like I have a whole notepad. It's probably like a chapter book by now. And like for like my ex, anytime I wanted to text him, cause I need to physically write and say things, I would just write it in this notepad. So I wouldn't text him, but like, I need to talk things out. Do you feel like, um, it's easier for you to like write it out than to say it. Maybe it's my Scorpio rising, no, but it I is always me. feel like I need no, to it write it me. as opposed I, to say it. I like, feel like as I write things out, I answer my own questions that I wouldn't have been able to do if I was mm-hmm. talking it out. Yeah. Because there's, like, there's so much going on. Like Because when you write, I really feel like it's your subconscious and conscious mind really having a time to connect at that moment. Yeah. It's a little different. Um. So yeah, so some celebrities with their moon in Gemini is Barack Obama. Love that. Mm-hmm. Jim Carrey, very Love. witty, a comedy legend. 50 Cent. Oh. Even though he is a troll on the internet. He, oh, yeah. <laughs> he, I mean, he... Isn't he mean on Twitter or something? He's so mean. Oh. Yeah. Well, boo you, 50 Cent. And future. It made me so happy. Made me so happy. So think of all these people needing to communicate, um, needing to be funny, needing to use deep humor. I mean, that just really makes sense um, for all of them. And I have a lot of Gemini. I have a lot of Gemini Moon friends. Really? Mm -hmm. Because I think it's like you attract the energy that you need, and I think that's why, like me and you, work so well. Mm -hmm. And you know, some of my friends have a lot of Gemini Moon because they can communicate and stimulate me the way that I need to be stimulated. Oh, now we're really getting them other views. You keep saying stimulated. (laughs) We'll start charging for this for real (laughs) for the stimulus. What about, so I'm excited to hear about your moon because you're a Libra moon and my son is a Libra moon as well. So I'm yes. excited to hear about this. This was a very interesting and I, I like, I, you know, I'm a cry baby. And if I like, I'll just cry. But this was definitely good. I researched, I actually learned some things and I really only wrote down things that resonated with me. So I am a 
Libra moon. Libra, like we said, is a cardinal air sign, also ruled by Venus. Mm -hmm. So if you remember from Priscilla's Taurus talk, um, that's going to be the luxury, the abundance, the love, the like beautiful, Mm -hmm. sensual, I need it. Like, so, and then when you think cardinal, that is like we said, the leadership, natural leadership, anyone in a cardinal position. I don't know what you'd call it. Um, And then it's an air sign. So we're still talking communication and intellect. And Mm -hmm. the way that affects your moon and yourself is that Libras are represented by the scales. So we're the natural peacekeepers. We have a keen ability to take a step back and look at a situation objectively in order to like to get the best results for everybody. But mm-hmm. really, Libras have a tendency to do a lot of people pleasing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so oftentimes the, I feel like the Libra becomes like, I'm always the one in my friend group. I'm always the one that's like the calm one who like, if you're, I know it's weird to think of me as the calm one in anything, <laughs> but you're like, no, looking, you are. you're looking at me like, bitch, what are you talking no, you about? Are. You are, um, you are, you are. But I'm very much so the helper when someone's like in a crisis and I'm like, okay, well, we're going to look no, at Hannah's this objectively. Like, okay, and, what, what should we do? Yeah, take okay. a step back. And yeah. and um, I have other friends who like, if there's arguments, I'm always the one in the middle doing all the, I'm like the diplomat of the situation pretty much. And the reason that that can be a bad thing is because when you have this strong internal need to like make sure everyone else is okay all the time, you have a tendency to backseat yourself. And I'm working on that because like a martyr. Because I literally will give and give and give and give all of my energy until I am so depleted I literally can't even speak anymore. Like, so it's really important as a Libra moon to remember that you know, you're the only one who has to be you and that it's not always your responsibility to handle other people's happiness and that you can't give everybody all of your energy. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes as bad as it is, you have to choose who should receive it, to be honest. Um, And I know it seems backwards because the Libra is supposed to be balanced and fair and equal and the just, but... Libra moons actually have a tendency to be a little bit like emotionally unstable. (laughs) So yeah. Okay. Thanks. I get it. It's not surprising. (laughs) (laughs) But no, we do because we're, think about it. We're literally spending so much time. Like, first of all, I'm also a Gemini. So I'm also constantly overthinking literally everything. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, I want everyone else to be okay. And I can't feel okay until I know everyone else is okay. And so it's like- can't really feel anything. Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. Yeah. I mean- Anyways, I'm a heartless monster. (laughs) (laughs) But no, it really does lead to a lot of anxiety when you're like constantly. And I feel like a lot of that like translated, especially in my like childhood- I was always very concerned with like if everyone was good and very hypersensitive to everyone's like micro body languages and Mm -hmm. all of their, the way they're interacting with each other. And it does lead to a lot of anxiety because you're literally just like feel in your heart that you're responsible for like everything going on around you and that everything needs to be just. Mm -hmm. And so it can be kind of like a heavy placement, but it can be a good placement because we like all air signs have a natural ability to speak to people. And then because you're seen as this voice of objective reason, it helps you propel that cardinal sense of leadership even more so. Yeah. Like I, even though I'm like unstable as fuck, I come across as like a reputable person. I feel (laughs) maybe not, maybe I'm not. I think like you describing this is so cute because when Jacoby was little, like he was so little and he would like sneak and go get fruit snacks. Mm -hmm. And I remember like when, you know, back when I lived in my hometown, I'd have my friends and their kids over and he would sneak and get fruit snacks and he would always sneak and get enough for everybody. And he would always Aww. pass out fruit snacks or he, if you get, if he got himself juice, he got juice for everybody. So I think that kind of That's was really showing cute. his Libra moon, like mm-hmm. even in those early younger ages of just always wanting to, yeah, have like a nice 
balanced. Mm -hmm. Everyone's taken care of. Everybody's good. Very much so the Libra has the we all eat mentality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I think that's a that's a really good quality, but it is something that you have to always, if you are having this placement, you need to like think about yourself and not backseat yourself and you have to actively try not to do so. Some celebrities with Libra Moon is um, Leonardo DiCaprio, which he's like a big humanitarian. Really? Mm -hmm. Ariana Grande. Ariana Grande. Sylvester Stallone. Anne Hathaway. Walt Disney. Ugh. A little racist, uh, but you know, he... he, he. I have words. (laughs) Unkind ones. (laughs) Okay. So that's a little bit of insight as to our emotional selves, how we mother ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're just a big, crazy little miss and I like it. I like it. I like it. I always say that Hannah is the stitch to my Lilo. Yes, it's so true. It's literally, it's so true. And uh, that reference just then was, y'all remember that part when um, Lilo was like adopting the dog that Stitch and she's like, what is that thing? I like him. <laughs> so me and Anna always say that Yeah, we other. always say it. It's so cute. So anyways, now that y'all understand our inside jokes, I think we can go on, blah, 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 blah. we can go on and ascend to our rising sign. Dun, dun, dun. I see what you did there. <laughs> So rising again is, I think, one of the most the most important sign that you should learn about yourself because this is, again, how you command Definitely. presence and how you want the world to address you. Mm-hmm. And I think this is why it throws people off sometimes that I'm a Taurus because my sad yes. is very powerful in my chart. Yes. This is why I'm so goddamn extra. Sagittarius. This is why when I walk into Rising. a room, you see like... And you gonna know. You gonna know that I'm in that beach. And that's why you fabulous. want to adventure and have your hands in all the different mm-hmm. aspects. Tell yes. us about that. So Sagittarius Rising, it's mutable. So it's very, you know, again, changing, flexible, flexible, and it's mutable adaptable. fire. Ooh. And Gemini and Sagittarius are actually on the same axis. So this energy Mm -hmm. is just very powerful in my chart. Yeah. And Gemini and Sagittarius are like known to be a really good combo for friendship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I think really it's because like fire is the doing. That's Mm -hmm. really what the fire represents is the action. It's the doing it and Mm -hmm. the passion behind that. Mm -hmm. So it's really something special. I love a good... I love, love a, a good, good Sag. Sag. Uh. So physically, like we said earlier, um, in the physical aspects of a um, Sagittarius is they're known to have long limbs because because they're ruled mm. by Jupiter, which is very expansive, which is crazy because I have very long fingers. Like my hands are like, I, my hands are almost the size of a lot of guys' hands. It's weird. Um, I have long legs. Like I'm just, don't, Jake is over here laughing. I do. Look, mm. look put your hand on mine. That's why she's able do to it. be celibate. Look, my hand is just as big as Jake's. Fucking said what I said. I'm always right. God damn it. And it's on camera. I caught oh, me being right. God, it's again. not on camera. Oh. It's not on camera. So bitch, you're wrong. <laughs> Sit down. Please. Still right. Please. Still does not negate the fact that I write. Okay, moving on. Oh, so, Jesus. <laughs> Who did this? So Sagittarius, so again, they're going to have long limbs because um, they're going to be very like, you know, like a beautiful uh, horse. Um, sa- <laughs> <laughs> yes, Sagittarius is the, it's the centaur. centaur. Yeah, I was like, oh, let me make sure I'm saying that word right. Centaur. Yeah. Um, no shocker here, but, um, you know... Sagittarius risings are very extra. They're very bold in their presentation. Some would call it dramatic. <laughs> Some would call it jealous. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so we're very bold. We're very loud. We're very expressive. And this is with mm-hmm. all things, with our emotions, with our dress, with our speech, with our voice. Like literally everything is like just in your face. Hello. Mm-hmm. Hi. How are you? This is, I'm here. This is what we're doing. Right. We are very assertive and very direct. Yes, very direct. And you know what? Uh, just to say, you definitely do come across as like the Sag rising is strong. Because I remember, and I said this on episode one, when I first met you, I was very intimidated by you. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh my God. As you should. This I'm just <laughs> first, I will hit you right now. <laughs> but you, it's like you had it all together and you're very, like you said, bold, but also 
you're like put together and then that hardworking Taurus energy comes mm-hmm. in and I'm like, oh, this bitch is scary. Get out of the way. <laughs> Get out the way. Get out the way. Get out the way. So the thing I love about Sagittarius is it's all about wisdom. It's the it's the sign mm-hmm. of wisdom. They love to learn and love to experience, which I love so that it you. pairs with my Gemini because it also, with Gemini, I have the boost to want to learn and then I have the love to learn. So right. you also have the inconsistency to need to go learn a bunch of different shit before about you everything. finished learning God, the other shit. Damn it, you're right. Um, I know. <laughs> Sagittarius Risings loves learning about different cultures and loves expanding their knowledge about literally everything. Sagittarius Risings love to travel. Oh my so God. You have a Sagittarius Nothing more. In your, it, yeah, rising in their life, buy them a plane ticket and they will literally love you forever. Oh my gosh. That's all we want to do. Even just like, I feel like some people, you know, like you try and show them pictures of your trip and they're like, I don't care. If you show it a Sag rising your trip, they're like, oh my God, where was that? But where was it exactly? And then pull out a note in their phone. Of I like, have notes in my phone of oh, cities. <laughs> I'll play, okay. This, 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 this. Yeah. I no, got to go here when I go here. Sagittarius risings love to travel. That is something that's really heavy inside of them. Mm-hmm. Very that's energized. That passion to see it and to do yes. it and to experience it, mm-hmm. which really pairs really well with your Taurus energy, which is so into feeling and being and and, you know, having that experience too. I just remember that one time when you were like, uh, you're, so I, I tell her that she's like the stitch to my Lilo. And then she's mm-hmm, like, no, mm-hmm. you know what your uh, big three reminds me of? And I was like, what? She was like, it's like that scene in Nemo where Nemo wants to go touch the butt. And the dad was like, mm-hmm. you want to do these things, Nemo, but you, but you just, just can't. You quoted it wrong and it's oh, killing me. Go ahead. Do it wrong. I mean, do you it think again. you can do these things, but you just. Nemo. <gasps> he touched the butt. Always touching some butt. That's you. <laughs> um, it reads. They're very transparent. And it was funny because as I was doing my research, um, one of the things was like, you're going to know right away what you're getting when you meet a Sag rising. Oh, for sure. You're going to, th- like within minutes. And it was like, for example, like the opposite is true of a Scorpio rising and which is which Hannah will get into. And she's like, <laughs> which it might take you hours or days or even lifetimes. And I was like cracking up. Sag, ri- uh, Scorpio risings are like very cryptic, but we'll get into that. Um, I'm wrapping it up. So <laughs> very transparent. Sag risings are very lighthearted, but also yes. come with a lot of deep um, emotions and right. very wise. But so they're so nice direct, balance. so they don't mm-hmm. like come across as like childlike no, in a way. No, you no, no, only no. really, like your big three, only the childish thing is like your moon, mm-hmm. which really reads for you because I feel like you are like low-key, super goofy, but mm-hmm. no one would ever know that no. about you, like no, necessarily. I have to be super intimate. Right. I have to have a really close relationship with you. And that's one thing I like about our podcast too is because I feel like this is an extension of the home and the self and the mother. And so I feel like I'm a leader right now so you don't have to be rude to me yeah for being um, a gemini that's, i don't make the rules nor do you well i don't make the rules and i also don't follow the rules so why are you still mean <laughs> 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 no but I, I i love my big three um yes you so have a good big three with the um some celebrity sagittarius Wait, rising you have good sag rising celebrities i know they're awesome um, duh. And that's why I know it's kidding. Um, you Paris Hilton, it. Kim mm. Kardashian, Ew. Oprah. Wow. Bruce Lee, Jimi Hendrix. Uh, love. Nelson Mandela, Erica Badu, the queen. Uh, Janae Aiko. The other queen. The other queen. The other equal queen. And you guys can see, like, as we're mentioning, you can see everything that I just talked about. The bold presentation, the the mm-hmm. love for learning and culture and just very, you know, love for knowledge and the the wisdom that's coming from them. Like, it's literally like you cannot make this up. Elvis Presley, Mother Teresa, and Princess Diana. I could see that a lot for Princess Diana, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh. But if y'all don't know all about that and the conspiracy theories, look it up. <laughs> okay. So you have a really good uh, big three. I feel like my big three placement is kind of heavy. So my rising sign is a Scorpio. Bow, bow, another sign that gets a really bad reputation, to be honest. She's literally glaring at me. Stop it. No, I was just saying I love you anyways. That's all Thanks. I was trying to say you said to my beautiful all of your wife. Flaws. Just- Despite your big three, despite I, your mini flaws, <laughs> I chose to call you my wife, anyways. 
Yeah, That's you're love. not smart for that. That's love. Mm. Anyways, Scorpio <laughs> is a fixed water sign. It is ruled by Mars and Pluto. A little two for one. A little two for one. But Mars is the god of war and Pluto is the god of the underworld. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot. It's kind of heavy if that, yes. that's a yeah. thing. And so the one thing that about a Scorpio that I think they get a reputation for being very like cold. If you think about it, fixed ice, or I'm sorry, fixed water. What is that? <laughs> You're making up elements. I'm, I'm fixed ice. But like fixed water is ice. Like we do come across as cold. I see what you did there. Mm -hmm. No, I was actually trying to say that. I just can't speak anymore. Yeah. I love Scorpio because Taurus and Scorpio is the same axis. So they carry yeah. a lot of the same energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that's true because like Scorpio is a water sign, but I feel like they really don't even come across as a water no, sign no. because water signs are very much so known for being emotional. And that can a lot of the times be their downfall. I'm talking to Pisces, but <laughs> God, they're exhausted. Oh my God. I'm tired. Oh my God. Cancers. Jesus. Anyways, not to be rude. Scorpios aren't better, but <laughs> this just became a roast session. Oh my God. Oh, we got to, we got to wrap it up. Um, but so, Scorpios don't come across as a water sign initially just because they do seem very reserved mm -hmm. and they don't seem to be quite as emotional, but that's actually not true. Like a lot of people will meet a Scorpio or a Scorpio rising and think that they're like really introverted and maybe even think that they like don't like you, but that could be not even be true at all because really Scorpio is an observer. Scorpio has to know what's going on. And so it like sits and waits. And even my, one of my really good friends is a Scorpio and she'll be like, oh no, because I know he's lying because I remember two months ago when I saw on his Facebook and his mom posted this thing and then it was this name. But then how could it be that name if it, this is his cousin and that's not his cousin. And I know that because then one time, like, it's exhausting. like literally she knows and she remembers and it's like, they're not going to call you on your bullshit initially. We're literally just going to bank it. And I'm going to see you lie to me and I'm going to know that you're lying to me and I'm going to let you. I feel like when you think of the energy of a Scorpio, think of an actual scorpion. Like think of yes. the hard shell, do not fuck with me exterior, that ready mm -hmm. to attack, that little slow, creepy, again, hard shell exterior. That now, sits and waits. When you prey. can break a, up a scorpion, then they're, they're soft and mushy exactly. on the inside. They have but an that exoskeleton. initial thing is very hard. Yes. Right. So, mm -hmm. they, so Scorpio risings really do hide behind this like, I'm a hard ass and I don't have any emotion facade when really we're like the most emotional. Mm -hmm. Very, very emotional. I've told y'all, y'all know all about it. I'm a- Y'all have the cry count. I am a cry baby. But one thing is that Scorpios are really intuitive. And like I said, we have an ability innately to read you and read the room. And we know like what's going on in your head. And we typically have a pretty good- idea of who you are as a person upon meeting you. And we have like a natural sixth sense. A lot of people say that Scorpios or Scorpio risings have a more tendency to be like a little bit psychic. Mm -hmm. For myself, um, I get really strong feelings. Like I can know if something bad's going to happen. And like, there'll be times that like, let's say I'll be driving and all of a sudden I'm like, nope, I'm not going that way. And I'll literally turn around to go a different way because just Something's telling my, you. My soul told me to. And mm -hmm. every time I don't follow it, something bad happens. Mm -hmm. So I always follow what my higher intuition tells me to do and it doesn't steer me wrong. And then honestly, okay, this sounds crazy. I swear I'm not lying. When I was a kid, I legitimately used to like have visions of things like that's so Raven style. <laughs> I would literally see things and then they would happen. And that obviously that doesn't happen to me. I don't even know <laughs> if that was real or if I just like wanted it to be real, but I would physically see things. Like, and then I'd be like, oh, snap, you know, not, not that dramatic, but it was that so Raven-esque for sure. Um, another thing that you need to know about Scorpio Risings is we have like a really high emotional intelligence and it can be hard for us to feel like we're understood on the same level that we're understanding everyone else. Mm -hmm. Scorpio Risings have a tendency to become the psychoanalyst and the therapist. I say definitely, I think most of my friends, pretty much all, like everyone at that dinner, mm -hmm. like I think if they needed something, they would come to me. 
Mm-hmm. And like I've had, I've helped multiple, like pretty much all of them, like get back up good if they were like really messed up emotionally or just really at all. Because the thing is, is like if you are one of those few people who is able to penetrate through that hard outer shell of the Scorpio, you will have their loyalty forever. Mm -hmm. And like, we will die for you. Mm -hmm. Like not even in an exaggeration. Like when my friend called me, I was ready to get on a plane at like 4 a.m. and come there if I needed to. Like I will stop at nothing. If you need me, I will be there. And that is it. No, she is. And I think pretty much everyone who's close to me knows that that is true. And if you don't, learn it. But it means they ain't close to you. Exactly. And it's and it's not for everybody. Yeah, it's really not for everybody. If you're not if you're not in my heart like that, then it won't be. But the thing is is that we tend to suffer in silence as much as we are the ones who are there to pick up our fellow people who we feel are in our corner, we tend to not want to deal with our own feelings. Like Priscilla's always having to tell me like, it's okay to feel things. How many times have you said that to me? So many. Because I'm just like, literally I'll say something. No, I'll say something terrible. I'm clearly having like a psychotic breakdown. And I'm like, no, it's fine. And she's like, it doesn't have to be fine. And I'm like, no, but it's, yeah, it's fine though. And then she'll like go on a whole rant and tangent and like about to cry. And she's like, but I'm fine. I'm like, Hannah, it's okay to not be okay. No, it's fine. That doesn't seem safe to me. I'm (laughs) fine. It's totally fine. And that's just how we are. And so one thing that uh, I was doing research and a couple videos had said this, and I really felt like it was very powerful is that for the Scorpio rising, it sometimes can be a very heavy incarnation and it can be a very heavy lifetime because we do understand other people. Our EQs are so high Mm -hmm. and we attract heartbreak Mm-hmm. Because we are so sensitive and with this facade of this armor. Yeah. And so we can attract all this heartbreak. And the thing to remember about a Scorpio rising, and if you are one, is that that pain and suffering becomes your superpower. And I've always felt like I'm here to like spread light to other people. Mm-hmm. And I like, I feel like the podcast really helps me feel like I'm doing that but definitely has been able, I've always been one to try and turn my wounds into a thick armor to Mm -hmm. protect myself and to help other people as well. And I think that mixed with my cardinal air moon sign, really, really Really doing some stuff here, really doing some stuff. So hopefully that'll be good. But the other thing about Scorpios is because we are so sensitive, we have like a deep fear of rejection because like if if we trust you enough to actually let you like get in and really know me then if you like hurt me and you like betray that it's like so devastating because the scorpio is actually a softy but you would never know but we do get a really bad reputation what like just scorpios in general scorpios scorpio risings literally people say the word scorpio and people are like oh so I loved hearing about that because you are my wife and you're a Scorpio mm-hmm. rising. My best friend, um, since I was 14 years old, she's a Scorpio rising and she, um, ha- she's like a life coach and she oh, helps wow. people. So hearing that, it's like crazy because she does, she, she, and she helped me and she always like, you. she's like, you're my trial, pa- uh, my trial client, you know, because she's mm-hmm. helped me through so much. And my I twin, fl- I just found out, um, I read my twin flames chart and he's a Scorpio rising. Mm. So I think that's interesting how I have all three of y'all as my therapists in my life, like my three most important That really people. is. And Isn't that, that interesting? is and that, that is kind of what the Scorpio Rising's path tends to be is mm-hmm. that helper and that guider and that spreader of light, even though we come across as sometimes, you know, reclusive. It's just that we have very few people who we let in like that. But one thing also to remember about a Scorpio rising is that there are times that like we have to recluse from you. And if you didn't know like that, that's just how we are. You might think like, are they mad at me? Or did I do something? Did I say something? Are they okay? It's like, bro, I'm fine. I just can't. I can't. I have to go into my little (laughs) scorpion cave and do scorpion things. (laughs) 
<laughs> that's funny because um, with pizza, that's how my best friend is too. Like there, there'll be days like I won't hear from her and then she'll pop back up. She's like, yeah, I just had my phone on D&D. I just couldn't do it. Yeah. For a couple, and it's like nothing personal towards anybody. She no, just not at all. needs her time. And like, uh, yeah, no, sometimes I, I physically can't like, yeah, I can't. Mm-hmm. And I don't even know how else to explain it. When I found out that my twin flame was a Scorpio rising, I was like, that makes he's he's Leo sun. Leo Ew. moon, Ew. Scorpio rising. Jesus. Yeah. I mean, hi. <laughs> <laughs> it's very exhausting. I'm literally tired. Like, it's holy like, shit. Uh, that was so much fun. I, I like that. So I feel like I learned about you and yes, I feel like you learned about me. I Hopefully and you like guys. And like other people, because when I meet some somebody else now, I'm like, oh, you know, I can. Yeah, I can have a little bit more, little um, bit more context. Understanding. Yeah. Um. So that was a lot of fun. I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up then. I hopefully you guys then. got a pretty good understanding of the basics of the big three. And maybe this will kickstart your experience and journey into yes. astrology. If not, hopefully you at least found it interesting. Yes. So I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up then. Wrap it up then. But because I know you can't get enough of us. You can find us on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube at, at Broken Bad Bitches. And we are also at Twitter at Bitches Bad. And remember, guys, that's always going to be an X instead of the C for all of those. So we just want to send you guys off with love and light. Yes, we do. And we want you to remember that regardless of your practices and beliefs, hopefully we can all set aside a little bit of time to get to know ourselves better in order to learn and grow and become better, more full versions of ourselves because we all deserve that. Beautiful. And we will see you guys next Thursday at 7. Streaming on all platforms where you get your podcast. Yes, get them out of hot. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we hope that you enjoyed this and we'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. When I tell you my ass is literally so sweaty, like...